This week, you could win one of three bundles for the Silver Bayonet. Winners will be chosen from OnTabletop.com, YouTube, and the Cop of Games members. Hello everybody and welcome to Three Colours Up. In this one we're going to be painting one of the Austrian Irregulars for the Silver Bayonet. So a nice little simple model, great little sculpt, one piece sculpts are, are great. Um, I don't paint many metal models and uh, I enjoyed this one quite a lot. So sit down, relax and let's paint it. So to start on our little Austrian guy here, we have quite a lot of detail to play with and what I'm thinking of is starting with the, the harder to reach stuff first. So I'm thinking getting his uh, shirt in here. Now his shirt is banded, so there's, there's going to be a light cream color, this black, and then the edges, and then another band of cream, and then it goes further down into another black band down here. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna get the cream color down, and for that we're going to use Wraithbone. And this is just gonna be a case of very carefully painting those areas in. But we're also doing this first because it's going to be quite easy to correct with some subsequent steps. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our consistency is what we want it to be. So it's just a case of dipping my brush into the water, into my water pot, and then sort of playing with it on the palette here until we have what we want. So we are painting over a black base coat as well, so we're going to have to be fairly careful with this. And just going to be a case of getting into that detail. Now, while we're waiting for that to dry, we can move on and do another step. And in this one, we're going to be using uh, Vallejo model color black gray. Now, this is going to be for his hat. And we're also going to do the black banding on the shirt as well. And I believe the shoes, because is he wearing gaiters? Looks like he's wearing gaiters, I think. And on the artwork, on the box painted miniature, I think I see gaiters as well. So we're going to be able to paint these areas in now as well. With the black gray now down and mostly ish dry, we're going to return to the shirt. For this, we're going to use Grey Seer. We're going to be using that for the little white banding, as well as the feather on the top of his cap. So I'm just going to take some of that out again, make sure it's thinned enough, or thin to my liking, because we want to make a nice clean line here. We don't want to mess anything up. So next up, we're going to tackle the skin. And for this, we're going to be using Vallejo Game Color Peel Flesh. Um, I just think a little bit of a paler thing going on here should work well for him and should tone down nicely with a little bit of wash too. So we'll see how this turns out. As you can see, this paint is a little bit thicker out of the bottle. It's quite an old bottle. Uh, I believe it's maybe, oh, maybe 15 years old, this bottle now. So had it for quite a while. So we have a couple of bits of flesh here. We have his knees, hands, and his face. And we want to do these now so that we can tidy them up later by doing other steps like the wood on the musket and the cloth either side of the knees and his facial hair and whatnot. Should tidy all this up quite nicely. So with the skin done, and everything that we've done so far now fully dry, we're going to move on to our first bit of major clothing. And we're going to do his jacket. And his jacket is in a green, sort of a bottle green on the box, but I want to go something a little bit lighter. So we're going to be using Vallejo model color, US dark green. And this, once it has a shade down on top of it, should give us something fairly close to that. Now it already does look pretty good on the palette, so I've also put out way too much on the palette, but <laughs> we're going to take our brush, make sure it's stirred up well enough, 
and then we're just going to start applying that to the model as well. At this point, again, we don't need to be too neat. We just need to be careful around the areas that we've already painted and just tidy up those areas as we go along. While the green is drying, we're going to take a little bit of Mephiston Red and we're just going to paint in his uh, little neck scarf here or his kerchief or whatever you want to call it. So moving on with uh, an, our next main color, which is going to be Steel Legion Drab. This is going to be for his um, shorts, the uh, gaiters around his legs and all the other sort of leather-ish kind of components. So a lot of the soft stuff again. So once again, we want to have our freshly shaken pot take some out, put it onto our palette, dip our brush in some water, figure out what our consistency is like. It looks all right to me. And then we're just going to start applying it. With that brown down, our, our miniature is starting to really take some shape. Let's have a quick swizz around to have a look. We'll be able to um, tone the backpack and the little pouch a little bit differently later on. But now we're going to move on to the weapon. And for the wood, we're going to use Vallejo Model Color Flat Brown. It's a nice, deep, rich brown. So we'll get that onto our palette. Move the bottle out of the way. Remember just to keep tidy and take your time. With the woodwork done, I also went ahead and painted his facial hair, his actual hair, and then on the pouch on his back, what I did was take some of the same uh, flat brown, thinned it down a lot more, and give it a very light layer of that, just to, to change the tonality a little bit, you know, all these fancy words. So we're going to move on to the weapons metal, and for that we're going to be using some lead belcher. Again, we're just going to put some onto the palette. And this really is the only metal work we have to consider. And because it's an old musket, the only other thing that's really there is there's one brass band, I believe, one bit of brand at the end of the woodwork near the muzzle. So it's really just this silver and a little bit of our brass. So we're going to go in and start applying our lead belcher. With the lead belcher down, we're going to move on to the little bit of brass, and for that we're going to be using Vallejo brass. Pretty straightforward, and my nozzle is clogged, so what I'm going to do there is just press down a little bit. I'll sort of just get enough, because it's a very tiny amount we actually need. So again, brush into water, stir it up a little bit. And this banding is just on the end of the woodwork. Uh, it's hard to figure out where on the woodwork it is. So I think we're going to just take a little bit there. And it just adds that nice little flash of color and just makes them look just a touch more interesting, a little brighter. So with that done, move all of this out of the way. We're going to move on to washing the entire model down. So for that we're going to be using null oil but we're going to be thinning it a fair amount. We're going to run that consistency a little looser this time. So because the shade is great on its own but it is a little too heavy. So you can see down here on the palette we'll get a good bit onto it and then we'll take charge our brush with some water check what our consistency is there and we'll add a bit more. Now this is still going to make the model look a little bit dark and a little bit muddy but running it a little bit thinner is going to help get into the recesses and settle into the recesses. It's going to stay wet for longer, it's going to move around a little bit more and hopefully pull in the areas that we want it to without staining the model too much. So let's just go for it. So 
So with the wash now dry, we can see we have just a little bit more definition on the miniature. Just looks a little tide marky in places, but that's not too bad. Once there's a, a matte varnish down on that to finish the model, I think we're on to a winner. So two more things I want to do before we wrap up. First, I want to take some dark oath flesh. I want to thin it down and apply it to the skin. So we'll get a bit of that onto the palette. Really, this is already a bit too much to put on, but if we thin down, you can see up here, make it a bit thinner than it should be. And then we will apply that to the skin. Because he is looking a little too pale at the minute. I think the skin needs a touch more to it just to make it look a little more interesting. Okay, so that's just a little more colour added to his skin. And the last thing I want to do is take some Skeleton Horde. And shake that up a little bit as well. Get that down onto the table. And what I'm using this for is really just a little bit of a tone change, a little bit of a tone shift. So I'm going to apply it to his shorts. And I think honestly, we'll probably add maybe a little bit uh, to the jacket as well, but that should be about it. With our base painted and a little quick coat of matte varnish, our little Austrian Irregular is finished. And I think he looks rather charming. Now I did follow the box cover or the, the box image a little bit. Um, I haven't really changed the main color layouts. I thought it would just be fair just to go with what they have and see how that turned out. And I think it's a pretty fair go. You can see more clearly now that I've put that contrast paint onto the jacket and the shorts, particularly you see it on his shorts. There's just a slight difference between the color of those and the color of the gaiters that he's wearing as well. And that's a nice little way of saying, hey, they are different materials or, you know, one piece is older than the other, that sort of thing. And it just looks like you've painted them, you know, slightly different tones uh, rather than just tinting one that's already been there. And it's a nice little way of going, I've done too much of this color, let me change that with something. And contrast paints and shades, um, mostly contrast paints in general, actually help a lot more with that, sort of change the tone of something, make it look a little different. All in all, a very charming little miniature, a lovely little sculpt. It's not often I work with metal miniatures, but when I do, it always seems to be, there's a lot of soul, there's a lot of heart put into the sculpting of them. And you know, these are no different. Uh, the silver bayonet and range in general is just really, really tidy. So. That's it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, maybe learned a couple of things along the way. If not, hey, let me know in the comments. If you have anything to say, let me know in the comments. And until next time, take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. This week, you could win one of three bundles for the Silver Bayonet. Winners will be chosen from OnTabletop.com, YouTube, and the Cop of Games members. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.